leading computer software company Microsoft is currently grappling with technical issues that have disrupted services for millions of users, particularly those here in South Africa, the United Kingdom and in India. Users in these regions have reported difficulties accessing various Microsoft services and that's prompted the company to launch an investigation into the root cause of the disruptions. Let's understand the issue better. Bring in our guest, my broadband editor is Jan Vermeulen, who joins us now via our very link. Jan, it's great to have you on the program as always. Thanks very much indeed for making time. And as irony would have it, we've been struggling with our connection to you because you're using Microsoft Teams, but I suppose this is how these things roll. What exactly is going on here? There are a number of reports that have emerged speaking of um, fiber optic cables that act as information highways somehow being damaged. Yes, uh, we don't know that the cables have been damaged and, and good afternoon, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, we, we don't know that the cables have been damaged, but they are offline. And the reason I make that distinction is uh, because we have uh, the, the official comment from the people who uh, would be first to know what's going on is no comment at this time. I've spoken to Telcom who um, is uh, uh, an important player on the SAT3 cable, in fact, it basically owns the SAT3 cable, and WIOC, uh, which is an important player on the WAX cable. Those are the two major cables um, feeding South Africa that uh, have been impacted by this outage. And, uh, it, uh, and it could be that there's a power disruption or uh, some political might have happened in Cote d'Ivoire um, because all four cables went down in Cote d'Ivoire near Abidjan. And until we find out more exactly about what might have caused the outage, um, I'm hesitant to speculate. But yeah, the bottom line is those four cables are down. Could be a landslide, could be a power outage, could be something else. Hmm. And that caused a knock-on effect here in South Africa. Microsoft's Azure data center, its cloud data center here in South Africa, um, suddenly uh, started, started struggling and, and uh, people were struggling to use Teams like we are now. And um, their emails stopped working. And you know, some of the Microsoft, they are cloud Microsoft Office applications stopped working. Vodacom's data network was offline for for an hour or so yesterday as well not nationally they say they say only some customers were impacted but we conducted tests in Gauteng and the western cape and all of our test devices were offline so um it impacted a significant chunk of uh, vodacom's customer base and uh, so so the the impact of this cable outage has been severe and wide-ranging. Yeah, absolutely. And um, as we better understand the issue, can you just speak to us about how susceptible this infrastructure is to damage? Yeah, it's quite vulnerable, actually. It's actually amazing how, how few incidents we have. And I think it's a testament to how well engineered these systems are. Everything from a shark biting the cable um, that's been a problem in the past, by the way. They've had to figure out ways to make them less attractive to animals like sharks. Um, and they, they cover the cables in Kevlar so that if a shark bites them, they're not broken. Um, uh, to, to geological events. So an earthquake, a landslide, a rock fall under the ocean, which happened just a couple of years ago off the coast of the Congo and took out wax and sat three back then, as well as the ace cattle. Um, so uh, the, these these cables are quite vulnerable to mother nature um, and uh, there are countries with the capabilities to sabotage mm -hmm. these cables um, but uh, that's not easy as i said the cables are coated in kevlar you have to dive deep um, to sabotage them uh, and 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 so uh, you know we've we've uh, the, we've yet to see that happened at any kind of significant scale but um, because there's no way for you to patrol or police the whole length of this thousand and thousand kilometer cable, they, they are quite vulnerable to, to many different things. Fascinating. Oh, I forgot one thing, boats that can drop their anchors in the ocean and drag them across the cable, that can snap the cables above, and that happens often in the Mediterranean. Sure. 
What actually runs through these cables, Jan? Is it an electrical current? Is it just, I don't know, vibrations? Is it a magnetic current? I'm only asking this because it'll give insight, hopefully, into how quickly the issue can be resolved if in, find, if in fact we do find that these cables, which you've just explained, are deep under the sea, are in fact damaged. Yeah, it's pulses of light generated by lasers. These are fiber optic cables. And uh, but they require electricity to boost the signals. Um, uh, so uh, as far as I know, there are some chemical amplifiers and stuff, but um, uh, the, the erbium doped fiber amplifiers I was taught about at university still require some kind of electricity to boost the signal. Um, so they're not completely um, independent of electricity supply. So if there's a disruption to electricity supply, even though it's light, they can go offline. Hmm. There's going to be obvious questions about what we learned from this, and I, I suppose among them there's a question around whether or not South Africa can do anything to protect itself from the worst case scenario, which is, I suppose, to being completely disconnected. First of all, how, how, how probable is that? And I suppose the second question then is, is there something we could have done to insulate ourselves from being affected? Yes, um, so there, there are things that could be done and uh, there are, the good news is that we don't have to look for solutions. Solutions are already available. So, there's a, uh, for example, there's already another cable on the West Coast active. It launched last year. It's Google's Equiano cable. It is a massive cable. It dwarfs all the other cables that have been launched, not just on the West Coast, but on the East Coast as well. And that cable is still live. Um, and funny enough, that cable, as far as we know, doesn't get ele any electricity supply from uh, from Cote d'Ivoire, which is another reason we, we haven't ruled that out as a possibility, because the data fits. So um, there's the Equion cable, then another cable that Facebook is, in, is invested in, but it's not just Facebook, MTN is invested in, it's called Two Africa, and that's a cable system that's gonna run around the whole continent. The West Coast portion of that cable has already been laid and um, has been connected to landing stations. They're busy with the East Coast portion now, and that cable is set to go live this year. We have so many undersea cables coming into South Africa. On the West Coast, we have like WAX, SAT3, Equiano, ACE, on the East Coast, we've got CECOM, we've got EASY, we've got the other leg of 2Africa that's coming online. Um, the, there's, there's really a glut of undersea capacity available. It is extremely unlikely that they'll all go off at the same time, short of sabotage. Um, and if, they, if the worst were to happen, if let's say, uh, you know, something extremely bad happens and like all eight, nine cables go down, at the same time, then there's always satellite backups. That's how we used to do things in the in the bad old days when Telcom had a monopoly <laughs> on um, international uh, communications out of South Africa. If Telcom's cable went down or cables went down, uh, we we still had the satellite backups. So uh, if the worst were to happen, we could switch back to satellite, but capacity on satellites is extremely limited. Um, with regards to what we can do better, I do hope that um, the people who are impacted by this, Microsoft and Vodacom and others as well, but especially people with mission critical applications like Microsoft, our government relies on the Microsoft Cloud and Microsoft Office 365 and, and Outlook and Exchange. Like uh, a corporate South Africa is heavily dependent on these services. They, like they are, the corporate South Africa and government was essentially ground to a halt yesterday afternoon, and that cannot happen again. So yeah. I do hope that Microsoft um, springs the extra money to buy redundant capacity on the other cables. That it also looks into why its local services went down when the, only the international cable went off. Why do we have that dependency? on an international cable for local services and isn't completely necessary. Um, so those are the things that need to be looked at with urgency to ensure this doesn't happen again. Sure. Also fascinating. As you speak about, you know, just how widespread the impact has been, I'm wondering who you reckon is best placed to, I suppose, inquire around what went wrong. I mean, if this is an issue that exists cross borders, in other words, between countries, if you like, because of where the infrastructure is anchored, 
Should it be governments that kind of spearhead the process, this fact-finding mission? Or are the Googles and Microsoft of this world, these multinational companies best placed to try to get to the bottom of what happened? Yeah, so the great thing about these cables is that competitors are invested in them. And so they, this isn't a monopoly situation where one party um, can just withhold information. Uh, these cables are consortium cables and everybody wants to know what's gone wrong. MTN, Vodacom, Telcom, uh, Wyoc, um, you know, just, just here in South Africa, Seacom, like um, there, there are so many companies and entities that have been impacted by this cable going down. Microsoft is another uh, player which while they don't own a stake in the cable, are, because they're so heavily dependent on it, I'm sure are, are demanding answers. Now, um, Microsoft might not give out that information, it will wait for the consortiums to, to release information. But yeah, there might be political sensitivities around this that we're not aware of um, in Cote d'Ivoire that they have to be careful about. Um, but I don't think um, that there will be silence on, on what's gone wrong here. Um, it's in everybody's best interests uh, to be transparent about what happened, uh, what's being done to ensure it doesn't happen again. Um, because otherwise, yeah, what will happen is governments will step in and that's the last thing these companies want. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's good to hear at the very least that we don't need to go back to the postman, so to speak, to get our mail across, given just how many options still exist. Jan Falmieren, as always, appreciate your insights. Jan Falmieren is the editor at large with my broadband.